Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are facing more backlash even after they are apologizing for their character statements for their friend, Danny Masterson, who's been recently convicted to 30 years to life. Not only that, we have to talk about Erica Mena, formerly of Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, losing another job. And it seems as if the legends are fighting. Lionel Richie is calling out Diana Ross for not wanting to perform their song, Endless Love, for 37 years, but she's over there performing for Beyonce, Happy Birthday. Beyonce's like, And where am I in it? And you could have did it. See, can I get it wrong? Because you never apologized. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Happy Sunday, guys. It's been a while since we've done a mashup of some pop culture news, but I wanted to talk about all three of these hot topics, but I'm a little not, not wasted. <laughs> all right, girl. Because, <clears throat> you know, I don't drink. But I went out. So, you know, when I go out on a, on a Saturday night, it feels like I've been drinking, but I haven't. So last night I went to the Fashion Bomb Daily Fashion Show for New York Fashion Week. I will talk more about it on the Kempire Radio podcast and probably on our Tuesday Takeover. It was an amazing night for fashion, but also an amazing night for up and coming fashion designers. So shout out to Fashion Bomb Daily for even inviting me. But... Let's get to the mess. So this is part of the reason why I couldn't get to the mess yesterday. So let's start off with Lionel Richie. So I saw this quick video on social media yesterday about this, and I was like, wait, he must be joking. So you know, during Beyonce's special birthday performance, she was working on her birthday, and Diana Ross came out to sing her happy birthday, which happy birthday, you remember, Beyonce did this for Diana Ross a few years ago as well. So Lionel Richie, as you know, has this hit song, Endless Love with Diana Ross. Well, during his own concert, he blasted... Okay, I know some of you, like, these words are very dramatic, but I'm dramatic. Well, he kind of did blast her because we didn't expect this. This came from left field. Lionel Richie basically said that for the last 37 years, he's asked Diana Ross, the boss, to perform their song together. And he said, I've asked her to come on this very stage, and she has refused for 37 years. There is a song I want to do. And for 37 years, I have tried my best to get Miss Diana Ross to show up on this stage right here tonight. 37 years, I have tried to call Miss Ross on the phone. But, but, but it was clear to me. She has told me no for 37 years. What did you think she was going to do? Show up tonight? The woman ain't coming. She's over there singing happy birthday to Beyonce. Piss me off. <laughs> My immediate question was why, Lionel? <laughs> Look, why? What did, you, what did you do to the boss? So he said that she's, he's asked her for 37 years to perform this song with him, and she's refused, but she's over there performing Happy Birthday for Beyonce. And he even said, pissed me off. Do I think that he's really upset at Diana Ross? Maybe. Look, may I, I, when I first saw this, I was like, well, I think he's being facetious. I don't know if he's really mad. However, to say this on a public platform where thousands of people are listening and now millions of people are now reacting to the video footage, I don't know. I don't know what was the intention behind saying this, but I also don't know why exactly Diana Ross wouldn't want to perform this song with you. I mean, what is the reason? I'm looking at you. What Did you do something? Did you not want to pay her what she wants? I mean, well, up the price if you really want her to perform it. And I think the fans would love to see a performance of Endless Love. It's been a long time. But I did find it sort of funny that this is what he decided to say on such a, in a public way. 
I do think there was some joking to it, but we don't know. We don't know. We is, is there beef? You know, we were just covering beef with Anita Baker and Babyface, and now we have these icons. Well, look, Diana Ross is never going to c- come off of her throne to respond. But I'd like to know. <laughs> I'd like to know, like, what happened? And some of you that have been following these people's careers for a very long time probably know. I've yet to see someone give us a little backstory on why there might be some beef between Lionel Richie and Diana Ross. There's something. Because he's right. She has not performed it with him for the last 37 years. What is the reason? What is the reason? Moving on. As you know, Love and Hip Hop star and uh, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta star Erica Mena was recently fired from the show. And some of you keep saying she they never said that they fired her. For those that don't understand entertainment industry talk, they have never said that they have fired someone. They will say they haven't renewed their contract. That person won't be returning. That person, they will give them the opportunity, very much like Nene. Hey, Nene, saw Nene last night. She looked great. Um, they will they will give them the opportunity to be like, I'm leaving the show, even though their contract has not been renewed. They have been fired. Okay? For those for those that don't understand industry talk, Erica Mena has been fired. All right? And literally, Mona Scott Young, once this fireation was, was announced, that it was, quote, handled. But people are still mad at production. They said, you sat on this footage of Erica Mena arguing with Spice during filming. Spice was talking about her parenting, which, which has been a, a hot topic on this show for a long time, even when she was on Love & Hip Hop New York. They were having this argument. Erica Mena, like She-Hulk, lifts the, the, the table to throw it at Spice at the same time is calling Spice a blue monkey, a monkey. And another element of the story that people don't mention is as she's getting into the car and leaving the scene, Erica Mena is making monkey sounds towards Spice. After all of the backlash, this is when the network decided to announce that she will not be returning. Well, since then, you may recall that Erica Mena does have some other jobs. And one of those jobs is performing in this this show, Hush. Well, according to the All Black Network, they released their own statement about this, stating this. They said, we do not condone Erica Mena's recent reprehensible comment. She will be featured in the upcoming season of Hush, set to premiere later this year, as production was completed months ago. So they're getting ahead of this so you guys don't get mad at them. They said, but in the event of additional seasons... Okay, sorry, Hush. They're not guaranteeing your seasons. In the event of additional seasons, she will not be a part of the cast. So they wanted to get ahead of this situation. But as you also know, if you've been following the story, there's been a lot of backlash in regards to Erica Mena being fired and not Spice. And when I was on IG Live just, just a couple of nights ago, I said this, and this is not my own original thought, but as I've been thinking about it, I'm like, this makes complete sense. I've seen a lot of you say this on social media. Please replace Erica Mena in this situation with a, a white woman saying this to Spice, saying monkey, saying blue monkey, or calling her the N-word. How would you feel then? Because there are a lot of things that Erica Mena could have said in this moment to Spice that could have dug deep. And she did say a couple of those things. But she immediately ran to Monkey, which is with... There's a long history. Google Schmoogle. I'm not going to get into it. It's a Sunday. Google Schmoogle, the long history of this racial slur, this racist terminology towards Black people with the use of Monkey. And Erica Mena leaned in using this racial term and then even made Monkey sounds. So the correlation of, well, Spice talked about her child and what Erica Mena said is the same thing and they both should be fired. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because Erica Mena decided to use a racial slur in her comeback towards towards Spice. She could have said so many other things, but she decided to do that. And at this point, I have yet to see Erica Mena apologize. And I'm one of those people that feel like, oh, they need to apologize like Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, which we're about to talk about. 
No, I do need you to take time to reflect and learn and actually do the work as to what you were saying and doing. But some of you have also said that this is not the first time that Erica Mena has been problematic, especially towards black people. So that debate has been ongoing. I see the continuous comments and I'm sure those comments will be in this comment section. Be respectful, we don't moderate adults. But you are entitled to your feelings. I'm not saying that you can't feel that way, but I'm telling you, this is how I feel in the difference of what Erica Menes said and did in this instance. At the end of the day, do they always get it right, these networks? Do, do these production companies always get it right when it comes to people they should have let go years ago? No. But that doesn't mean they can't get it right now. And do I believe they got it right with Erica Mena? Yeah. And the fact that Erica Mena has since not even spoken on this, has not apologized, says a lot, speaks volumes. The silence is deafening. Well, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, as you know from the 70s show, they're actors, apparently activists for S trafficking. Please understand there are certain words that we are going to have to eliminate from this video just because of advertisers and Google. I apologize, but I think you can kind of read between the lines. So yesterday, they released a video apologizing and trying to clarify their character statement for Danny Masterson. So for those that don't know the, the background behind Danny Masterson, I'm going to give you a quick report on what happened with Danny Masterson. Again, I'm going to have to abbreviate a few things. And this is from our friends over at AP News. So he, the judge sentenced the 70s, the 70s show star Danny Masterson to 30 years to life in prison this past Thursday for arring two women, giving them some relief after they spoke in court about the decades of damage he inflicted. He was facing three different charges. Only, he was only convicted for two. We're going to talk about the third charge, the woman involved in the third charge, because she's speaking out about Ashton Kutcher. So the Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Charlene F. L. Adamedo handed down the sentence to the 47-year-old Masterson after hearing statements from the women and pleas for fairness from defense attorneys. The actor, who has been in custody since May, sat in court wearing a suit. Masterson watched the women with, without visible reaction as they spoke. He, he maintains his innocence and his attorneys plan to appeal. So for those that, that have been following the situation, so you know that originally this his first trial in this case ended up in a mistrial. So in the second trial, a jury found Masterson guilty of two of the two of the, of the three are counts on May 31st. Both attacks took place in Masterson's Hollywood area home in 2003 when he was at the height of his fame on the Fox Network sitcom that, that 70s show. According to AP News, they said they, they could not reach a verdict on the third count, an allegation that Masterson also art a longtime girlfriend, Christy Bixler. They said the judge sentenced the actor after rejecting a defense motion for a new trial that was argued earlier Thursday. The sentence was the maximum allowed by law. It means Masterson will be eligible for, for parole after serving 25 and a half years, but can be held in prison for life. But here's the thing, very much like the recent video that we did on Real Housewives of New Jersey, Sardina Manzo and her ex-husband and Caroline Manzo writing uh, character letters. We have another situation here. And we were also talking about this with the Tory Lane situation. But here's the thing. This is even worse with this particular situation. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, who have known Masterson for many years since working on that 70s show, wrote character letters for him, probably not realizing that these character letters, character letters would be made public in court. So after the backlash, these two actors released a, a video statement, which a lot of you said felt very scripted, did, didn't feel authentic. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us, to write character letters, to represent the person that we knew for 25 years, so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. 
and we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual sexual Everything that they said in, in this video didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to me. And I know a lot of you are like, why would they do this? Why would they, they, they trump for this guy? You could have just refused, even if you believed what you believed. So in this video, they are basically saying that, you know, the family reached out to us. They asked us to, to write this letter for him months ago, but we do believe victims. We, we Basically, they were saying they, they didn't think that the public would find out about this, that this letter was for the judge. Yes, this letter was for the judge so that the judge would probably give him a lesser sentence, taking away from what the victims said in this, in this court of law. Because they say in this video that we do believe in the judicial system, we do believe victims, but we did not want to discredit the victims. Yes, you are discrediting. You realize giving a character statement for the, their predator, you are contradicting what they're saying about this predator. They want him locked up whatever is the maximum amount for what he did. So you, using your power and your fame and your influence in this character letter, is trying to contradict that. But of course, they're trying to save every other opportunity and business that they have as actors and business people and as entrepreneurs. Because, you know, Ashton has quite a few different things that he works in now. But here's the thing. A lot of people are wondering, and this could get real deep, and we're not going to get too deep into this. There are plenty of other content creators and YouTubers that are covering this, that have been following this situation with Masterson a very long time. Go give them a like and a view and and follow. Here's the deeper part of this. So Chris, Christy Bixler, she was the third person in these allegations. Her particular charge, he was not convicted of. All right. So she posted on her social media. And I also want to talk about what Christina Ricci said on her social, social media, because I think that's important, what she says in regards to what Ashton and Mila, Mila did. But Christy Bixler, posted on her Instagram story with a photo of Ashton and Mila. She says, Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your, quote, role model keeps for you. Keep this in mind. She says, ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night. You called Danny on February 21st, 20, 2001. That's very specific. She says, I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. Then she goes into Mila because a lot of people have been talking about some of what Mila talked about during her early years on That 70s Show. She says, Dear Mila, I pray you begin to process what you experienced as a child on that set. Your old interviews are very telling. I encourage everyone to watch them and decide for yourself what, what you hear and see. Do so before they get scrubbed from the internet. I also know that what happened in Toronto and after. Question, if that's what you view as normal relationship with a big brother figure, then, then I feel very sad for you, and I hope you consider getting into therapy. You all must forget I was there the whole time those first five years of that 70s show. I remember everything. So it, it, this digs a little bit deeper, especially when it comes to Ashton and one of his old girlfriends. We're not going to get into that. But there are, there are secrets, and this might be the reason, the motivation behind Ashton and Mila put, putting in the character statements. Because at the end of the day, they didn't have to. They, it would cost them more. Why would you put yourself in a position where it would cost you more than what Danny was facing? Maybe because Danny has your secrets, allegedly. So Christina Ricci is speaking out on this situ situation. I think this is a perfect way to sort of sum up what is being said on social media about Ashton and Mila writing this character letter, character letter for Danny Masterson. She wrote this on her Instagram story. So sometimes people we have loved and admired do horrible things. They might not do those things to us, and we only know who they were to us. But that doesn't mean they didn't do the horrible things. And to discredit the abused is a crime. People we know as awesome guys can be predators and abusers. 
It's tough to accept, but we have to. If we say we support victims, women, children, men, boys, then we must be able to take this stance. She then says, unfortunately, I've known a lot of, quote, awesome guys who are lovely to me who have been proven to be abusers privately. I've also had a personal experience with this. Believe victims, it's not easy to come forward. It's not easy to get a conviction. Guys, as always, I want to know your thoughts on some of these hot topics, and specifically this most recent one with Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, and Danny Masterson. Let's continue this grown conversation in the comments section. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching. Ooh,